Well, hello everyone and welcome to RV Talk Radio. Here we talk about RV travel, RV living, and RV lifestyles. So grab yourself a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, relax, and let's talk about RVs. Well, hello everybody and welcome to episode 47 at RV Talk Radio. It's going to get super, super hot here down in Phoenix, and we're getting prepared, so stay tuned. So uh, our biggest shocker of the week coming up here, and we're doing this show a little bit earlier in the week, I uh, have this ready for Monday, and the reason why I do this is because we're going to talk about the weather a little bit, because we're down here in Phoenix, and one of the first times it's going to hit... Well, it's, gonna, it's hit 100 before, but it's going to hit 100, then 104. Then I believe it's going to get as high as 114 degrees. So, wow, it's going to get toasty. So, it's been kind of nice because uh, you guys probably have heard we've added a third air conditioner. So, we have the two main ones, and then we have a portable one, uh, Honeywell, that we piped out the window. Um, but it's a freestanding um uh, air conditioner and between the three it's really amazing how well it's doing and so now the true test is coming up when we hit some of these uh 105s 110s 115 degree weathers and you know everybody says that's miserable and stuff but you got to remember that this is phoenix there this is their winter time that's why everybody's up north and so you either hunker down or leave the area well we have to hunker down you know why and so, but you also got to remember, like, when September comes along, we get, like, nine months of nice summer weather. Nine months of it. So, just like wherever you may live and you have a winter, you got to deal through the snow time or the freezing time, but then uh, you get blessed with a beautiful spring and summer. And so, we're in that mode here. So, as much as you might cringe saying, guys are insane, just remember in what three more months it's start it'll start chilling out and then we have this continuous summer weather uh throughout the fall the winter and spring so that's just how it is so uh <laughs> we'll keep you in, in mind uh, uh informed about how well we're doing with this heat still kind of hard to get used to being from the northwest sherry and i like the sleeping cold temperatures and things like that and we don't want to push the air conditioners uh, to be working harder than they should so really the ideal temperature we're trying to hold in the rv is around 74 degrees and so that's uh, uh livable and then we're kind of getting used to a warmer climate and uh, we're getting there we're getting there so anyway get warm I think uh, another thing I want to bring up is one of the things we, we try not to do, and we're not experts on by any means on RVs. We just do this a lot, and you hear a lot of things. So one of the things we, because of the warm temperatures, we we think it's critical to make sure that your black tanks and stuff have always got lots of water in them. And the reason being is you don't want anything drying out, uh, especially in the black tank, because then you get the clay clayization I'll call it <laughs> happening in your tank and causes a lot of problems with uh, uh, cleaning out, uh, rinsing out your black tank so we we keep it pretty uh, uh, constantly pumping water in there and keeping the tanks like three quarter full even after we empty it we fill that tank right back up again and keep, keep it moist, keep lots of uh, liquid in it. Uh, the other thing is uh, a friend of ours said they were going out of town for a week or so and they had to leave their RV in there in Phoenix. And they want, were kind of curious what they want to do with the refrigerator. So they were thinking about shutting it off, which is fine and it's not a problem. But uh, one of the things I know and learned uh, the hard way is make sure you leave the doors open so it's ventilating. Otherwise, it's a great situation to come back to a moldy refrigerator. <laughs> and that's not fun at all. So... Um, if some reason you're storing your RV and stuff, always make sure you keep your doors open. 
really important to keep the keep from uh, mold building up. So that's all I know about that, but wanted to pass that along. Our other main concern during this really, really warm weather is be careful of cinder, our dog. So the problem is, is concrete gets really warm here. So you really have to make sure like in the mornings we're, we're fine. We get cinder outside. We walk over to the dog park. And in the evenings, it's okay, too, once it starts cooling down. But that mid-afternoon, uh, you know that concrete's getting real warm. So what we try to do is we still have to get her to the dog park. So we'll run across the street, get over to the gravel, um, or just walk as fast as we can. It's not a long, long um, amount of time that she has to walk on any concrete. But uh, it can be very um, uncomfortable for the pups. So we keep that in mind all the time. Uh, we always hope that people are conscious about remembering that their um, <laughs> the puppy's paws get kind of sensitive. They actually even suggest that you can put socks on them. I don't know if I can even get Cinder to hold still for putting little shoes on her. But uh, if it gets to that point, we'll do it. So anything we can do to take care of puppy. So anyway, that's the other piece of information about these high temperatures. Uh, that we're going to pass on. I think also, last but not least, the other thing that we always have to uh, make sure we do here is stay hydrated. So you will be amazed how much water you will drink. You know, if you're on a diet where it says you have to do 64 ounces of water, if you live in Phoenix, piece of cake. <laughs> no problem. You live in Washington, you'd be in the restroom the whole time. So... Uh, Boy, it's you know we used to just buy like one case of De, uh, the Fani water, and be fine. That'd be lots of water. Now, when we go to the grocery store, we're actually buying two cases of water now, uh, and we're using it. So it's amazing how much water we drink. So, if you're coming down to Phoenix or you're living in the Phoenix area, uh, keep the water around. It's it, it's amazing how the warmer weather just really sucks you dry. And so uh, you don't even really notice it. <laughs> but you'll notice that so much water goes in and not that much water comes out. And you're going, what's going on here? And it's good for the good for the bod. So those are some of the things we've discovered down here so far. I'm sure there's going to be other shocking things that we didn't know about. But yep. Uh, here it is, hot weather at Phoenix. Got a couple of wet months of it. Here we go. Well, Sherry and I have had a chance to meet some folks here, and and we in in the RV park we see all kinds of rigs coming in, uh, Class A's and a couple of Super C's once in a while. But uh, these young couple that we've met, they're both actually um, traveling nurses. So, boy, talk about the perfect jobs for being a full-time RVer. And they have a like a 32-foot trailer. And I, don't, I can't see the make of it from here. But we uh, we had dinner with them last night, which they have one of those Traegers. I have got to get a Traeger one of these days. I don't know where to put it, but I want one. And uh, so they said, hey, you got to try this cooking Papa Murphy uh, <laughs> pizzas in a Traeger. And so... They um, they were gone for a couple of days and we were watching their place and they came back and they like uh, hey we bought two uh, pizzas tonight because it's like ten dollars on Tuesdays or whatever so uh, why don't you have dinner with us it's like great and of course you guys probably saw our video about making pina coladas so we have lots of pina colada mix so we made pina coladas they made the pizza we went over and I had a chance to peek at their trailer and it has three slides two in the back for the living room one in the living. And I swear to you, I was in a fifth wheel. It was amazingly roomy. And so what I'm passing on is, if you're thinking about full timing, do take a look. And it's hard to find them, but there are some really nice trailers out there. And uh, that have all the room that a fifth wheel has. Now, the drawbacks, of course, will be less storage. And But the good thing, like for me, what I miss about having a trailer as opposed to my fifth wheel is I've lost the back of my truck and the back of my truck I have a really nice canopy which I had to store up in Central Oregon and I, I always got that big hitch in there and yeah we could pull it out but it's uh 
I, I do miss having the back of my truck and I do miss my canopy. And so probably not that big a deal with the weather that I've just been telling you about, but uh, if you're looking to become a full timer, truly take a good look at some of these trailers nowadays. Um, one is they're very cost effective and, and I got them to kind of reveal their numbers. So you're looking around plus plus or minus the 40,000 mark. And we're talking new. And uh, I think you would have a little more trouble with what to do with maybe a generator. Uh, I think you probably have to go portable. I don't know for sure if you can actually get a one installed into the trailer. Anything's possible. You will be giving up a lot of tr um, storage space below, but you know you got the back of your truck too. So, and you know if I really looked at all the stuff I have in my storage, there's a lot of it I could disperse a different way. So, I don't. Know, there's an RV tip I think you really ought to consider if you're really trying to keep your costs down. You know I could have saved myself thirty-five thousand uh, dollars or better. Uh, but I also have an RV that has built-in things in it that you would not normally have in a trailer. But you sure could come close. And I, I really recommend that if you're shopping, before you buy the Class A, before you buy that fifth wheel, take a really good look at some of these really good trailers. You're going to have to do a little bit of homework. And uh, uh, I'll try to figure out what brand that one was. But uh, you're still looking at at least uh, over a 30-foot trailer and you're going to need sway bars and things but man was i impressed nice layout nice living room residential refrigerator the bedroom actually had the storage the closet just like a fifth wheel totally amazed and the um, reason i was changed from that was we had a comfort and it did not have much as far as storage in the sleeping area so anyway uh do take a look So, people always wonder, well, what are you guys up to? And what's what's uh, what what's going on in Phoenix? <laughs> and you guys kind of just stopped, and it's like, well, we didn't really stop. We're kind of regrouping and kind of reevaluating and, and taking a look at things. So, we uh, stopped. Sherry's working full time uh, at a really nice company, which uh, you know our income stays at a really nice level, which is allowing us to tweak our finances the way we want, tuck away some more money, and in two weeks, <laughs> Sherry and I are taking, and I know you won't believe this, we're in Phoenix, we are taking sailing lessons. Yep. Now you know Sherry and I, we've been avid boaters for years. Um, over 25 years of boating, all sizes of boats, and um, anyway, from you know, and up to 30 footers, we've uh, avid salmon fishermen, things like that. But what we never had the chance to do, and we've been inspired by several groups, not only Gone with the Winds, but many more, of looking at what it would like be like to learn how to sail. Now, there's several ways. Well. Sherry and I have always been a power boater kind of people, so we like to yeah, fire up them engines and off you go. But you know, we're slowing things down, and plus, once again, you start thinking about cost. And boy, when you're putting gas in a boat, you're talking about some major money. And uh, keeping up those engines and the whole thing. Well, all that doesn't go away, but you can really change. Um, anyway, so before I you know, kind of go any deeper in that, so. We're going to go find out if we even like the sailing part of, of boating. We don't even know. And we it's a bucket list thing, guys. We have a bunch of bucket lists. i got to also go in a hot air balloon, too. There's all kinds of stuff. Here's a This is another checkoff <laughs> of something we had to do. I saw my rattlesnake check. <laughs> and now it's sailing. So maybe it's, I don't know, uh, second winds, uh, second childhood stuff we're going through. I don't know what it is. So... What's really, so Sherry and I were going, well, we're never going to find sailing lessons in Phoenix. My gosh, it's a desert. <laughs> Not. They have a giant reservoir called Lake Pleasant down here. So 
looked it up, got on the internet, sure heck, sailing lessons. <laughs> so there they were. It's like, you know, Sherry and I, uh, like I said, because Sherry's working, our income is still nice, um, we can still experiment and try things. So signed up. So on the 18th, we're going to actually go take sailing lessons and see if we like it. If, and these are certifiable. Um, uh, we're actually taking Basics 101, and we actually get to log our hours. And what's really cool is if we really like it, and we don't have to buy a sailboat or anything, if we go to like San Diego or something like that, and we get all these certifications, and, and it's going to take a little time and money, um, we'll probably have a good two, three grand into this if we went through all the courses, we would be certified to be able to rent a, a cruiser over in San Diego if we wanted to and 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 take it out and rent them and and show that we could pilot them. So these will, this will give us the credential to do so. And of course there's other things in our minds that we're not revealing yet that we're thinking about that um but does not mean we're giving up RVing or anything. Um but we're looking at some options and some things that we've never had the chance to do and this is our chance to find out this, if this is something we want um, it also talks about you know this also brings on our health we got to lose weight we need to um, and maybe something as active as this it's, it's you just don't sit behind the wheel and say woohoo let's go there's a lot of work and so it might be just a ticket for an activity that Sherry and I would enjoy so <laughs> that's probably our biggest surprise probably our biggest announcement is this will take time this is not a f um, by the time we get all these certifications we want to probably take us all summer and then we'll go from there and, and, and by then we can tell you whether we loved it hated it or eh it's okay I can live without it so we'll find out and so <laughs> a sailing we would go a sailing we would go Anyway, so we'll let you know what we find out and uh, whether we liked it. Moving on. Well, we had the uh, grandkid over here the other day. And I got to tell you, I can't emphasize enough of something I'm so proud of my daughter that she's done with her almost a four-year-old now. But since he was one just over one and we got to you know we flew down here and visited her for a week or so and got to see this but our grandson the little one is swimming and he was able to swim at one years old now it's you know it's not the kind of swimming that you and I do you know um, anyway but it's a survival kind of swimming and stuff but so now I haven't seen them that much but lately and, and, and she came over with uh, some of the boys and they had the little one and we went over to the pool and uh, <laughs> that little guy just tears up the water he loves water and it's amazing is what's tough and this is I'm, I can you know my I gotta give my daughter credit because she's a tough tough gal uh, beautiful woman she when he gets into the water and, and does a little uh uh, do doggy paddle kind of thing he's kind of bobbing like a bobber and so you want to just want to reach out and save him and, and so what she had to learn and all the parents have to learn when they're teaching the little ones to, uh, to swim is is don't do it you're not teaching the kids survival if you're going to reach out and save them so you have to let them head bob a few times and, and drink a little water and stuff but um it's the, I, 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 that's got to be tough. And so he dives in there a couple times. He's doing some head bobbing and, and mm -hmm. <laughs> he kind of like, you want to save him. And he kind of pulls himself out back up again, kind of coughs up a little water and he's, he's doing it. And, and it's all about down here in Phoenix. So many people have pools and a lot of people try to protect their pools, but kids are just, you know, what happens and so it's really critical that a kids know how to swim down here. And I just got to give my daughter so much credit because they do have a swimming pool too. 
and uh, it stays locked up. But still, there's that chance that the lock fails or a kid somehow figures out how to climb the fence. You know what kids do. And <laughs> I swear, I just, and not only does he swim, but he loves it. He's just having a ball. He, and as long as mom's in the water, he's run, getting out of the water and jumping in. And, and he just bobber like a fishing bobber. And uh, he's not doing any controlled kind of swimming like overhand and stuff like that. But he's only three. <laughs> he's going to be uh, four, I think, this month. So we're actually going down to a really big water park here in Phoenix. And so uh, I don't know if uh, um, big boys like us should be doing uh, uh, those things. We could actually cause a tidal wave, but we'll see. But uh, Grandma and Grandpa are supposed to go on his birthday to this big water park in Phoenix. I think it's a Mesa and uh, for his birthday. So that ought to be interesting. I'm sure I'm going to have some stories uh, of uh, them trying to talk me into something I'm probably... Uh, uh, haven't ever done. I'm actually, I, I think the last time I was ever in a water park, I was in my 20s. So it's been a while. But I, I just wanted to get back to the fact is, guys, if you have little ones and are not swimming yet, you need to fix that. Um, can you imagine if something happened? It'd be all, on, you know, you'd have to live with that, knowing that you didn't take the time to make force your kids to learn how to swim. And yes, you, if you have to, force them. Um, it doesn't have to be the fantastic swimming, survival swimming, anything to buy some time when someone's in the water. Um, you know, you, you'll, you'll never regret it. So other than the fact you have to pay for the lessons, but anyway, really impressed with my daughter, great little kid swimming like a fish and, uh, real proud of her. I did want to take the time to thank some folks. We kind of uh, made some changes on our channel, <clears throat> which we now call Outdoor Travel Channel. And that does, we still have RV Travel Buddy, we still have RV Talk Radio, we, RV Travel Quest, all that stuff. It's just all under that big umbrella because we're expanding and you can kind of get a hint why because of our earlier statements of uh, uh, opening our platform up for a little more than just RV. But RVing will still always be there because that's the choice we've made for living and keeping our costs down. And uh, uh, anyway, so uh, the channel, we've noticed a, a, a much faster growth. We've seen a lot more folks. We see a lot more people trying out our new radio station, Outdoor Travel Radio. I uh, just want to remind you to what we wanted to create, and I already said this in the last show, and I just want to put emphasis on it, is it's not just a talk show. And the problem is, is a radio show, and if it's just a talk show, if I'm talking about fishing and you like hunting, then that's not a fun show to watch, listen to. If you like just RVing and don't like hunting, uh, and we're just talking about you know, hunting, you wouldn't be interested. So what we've done is is on the hour we'll do like uh, five to ten minute uh, little shots uh, talk things on different outdoor subjects and we'll eventually be bringing experts in as we get kind of connected more with some of the other podcasts and stuff and allowing them to do a five to fifteen minute um, sh shows and different outdoor subjects but that's it and so the rest of it is really really good music and it's the kind of music that people um, of all ages should like. It's uh, it, it's modern. It has classical rock in it and some uh, even easy listening. And But there's music that you will recognize. It's pleasant music. And what we want to do is create a show or a radio station you could take with you anywhere you go. All you have to do is go to, our, uh, to, <laughs> to Outdoor Travel Radio dot com in the top corner in the right hand corner if, if you got a cell phone go go to the website that way you'll see a little link it says a mobile app and you just press that and it downloads a very simple little app that all you have to do is press that app and off it goes right to our radio station and either you know you'll come to our the the music or the on the hour talk shows we also on on weekdays have a old time radio show it's on at 7 o'clock pacific 9 o'clock eastern 
It's on every night on the weekday. And it was really cool. Sherry and I, at about 7 o'clock, go for a walk in the park, part of our kind of getting skinny campaign. And so we kind of try to do it. One is the evening is it's cooler here. And we can listen to an old-time uh, Gunsmoke show. And then after that is uh, Sherlock Holmes uh, while we're walking, which kind of makes forces us to stay out walking for an hour. And so we love it. So we grab our cell phone, we turn on the radio station, and we, Sherry and I, listen to the old-time radio shows. We love it. Those are so fun to listen to. And you'd be amazed how quick it makes things go by when you're especially walking. But you, what we wanted to do is create a radio station. You could turn on your phone, turn it on, and listen to it while you're driving or listen to it while you're fishing or while you're hiking while you're walking, while you're doing activities or even working in your yard, it's it's just a great show. And then uh, we'll constantly keep tweaking in the 10-minute, the 15-minute talk shows. And we're trying to reach out, but we're kind of new. So the, you know, the hot shots kind of like, yeah, you're new. You're not that big. We don't want to deal with you. But um, we're just kind of, as time goes on, we kind of keep growing a little more. Eventually, someone will say, gosh, can I be on your show? <laughs> so we'll get them. Anyway, so OutdoorTravelRadio.com. Please go check it out. It's so easy to go to. There's a link in this description. Otherwise, just write this down, OutdoorTravelRadio.com. And you can listen to it on your PC. You can listen to it on your uh, tablet. And you can listen on your cell phone. So there you go. It's very simple. Give it a try. Try it in the evenings, try it at night. Now, at nighttime, if you want to just play it when you go to bed, we tone the music down a little bit to more easy listening So, uh, and a lot less talk shows and stuff. So it's really a nice station to have in the background. Some people like noise when they're sleeping um, just to make them feel more content. And then that's what it's designed to do. So please check it out, OutdoorTravelRadio.com. So, of course, the other thing I've got to remind you guys of is making sure that you take the time to contact us. We appreciate that. Um, so on almost all of our websites, whether you go to Outdoor Travel Radio, Outdoor Travel Channel, uh, RV Travel Buddy, uh, RV Talk Radio, whatever you go to, there's always a contact page. And we get some of the greatest stories and the greatest notes, and we do appreciate it. And keep them coming. And then, of course, if you bring up a subject that you want us to talk about uh, on the next show, we certainly uh, will we'll certainly give it our, our best shot. So um, we love constructive feedback. We love, uh, of course, courtesy. And, uh, but we also like to know what we're doing right. And if there's certain things that you like that we are doing, let us know because we don't want to cut them out and find out you loved it in the first place. So anyway contact us we appreciate the feedback if you're watching our videos please leave con uh, comments once again those are more public so make them um, comments that pertain to the video if there's something more personal or more uh, in depth that you'd like to contact us just go to one of our facebook pages all of our sites have their own facebook pages um, go to the message button shoot us a note that comes directly to us and we'll dialogue with you right away so Please contact us. We enjoy hearing from you. We'd love to hear from our listeners. We'd love to hear from people that watch our videos. And uh, we don't care if it's about your about pets, about RVs, or whatever you like to talk about. And, of course, now with the new Outdoor Travel Channel, we're getting more people. We're talking about fishing and hunting and, and uh, boating and sailing and all these other things. And it's been a lot of fun. And we're expanding our search of different folks, too. So we're posting and, and sharing a lot more videos of things we've never seen before uh, because we've kind of been locked into this RV thing all the time, which is good. But at the same time, we've overlooked a lot of things that are going on around us that we kind of opened up our paradigm. We've over here done what we call a paradigm shift. <laughs> so anyway, get a chance. Give us a holler. We love hearing from you. Thanks. Well, believe it or not, while I've been actually doing this show, <laughs> this big old RV moved out of the way, and I can actually see the trailer that I was talking about earlier in the show. And it is a open range. 
I don't know a whole lot about them, but it's a beautiful trailer. Uh, 32 something is what I saw on the side of it. Two air conditioners. Really good looking trailer. And uh, I'm, I was really impressed with it. So once again, if you are looking about, thinking about full timing, do keep in mind that there are some trailers now that are quite impressive. What's nice about those is, uh, let's see if I remember this correctly, but when you pull a trailer, more of your weight is on the tongue. When you pull a fifth wheel, you're distributing the weight between the truck and the axles. So that's the difference. So you have to have a truck with a good tongue weight. Um, can carry. I have, have a lot of tongue poundage on it. Um, but other than that, uh, you gain the fact that you get your truck. <laughs> your truck isn't got that big old hitch in the back. So once again, sorry to bring up an old subject, but I did want to make sure I pass that on to you. It is the trailer I saw that I was really impressed with was an open range. So there you go. So uh, changing the subject a little bit, even though I'm still on, I didn't do a transition. What's really amazing me lately is I just don't understand everything. <laughs> is So Sherry and I have been trying to monitor more of the liveaboard boats and stuff like that. That's all I'm going to tell you about. And so we see a lot of young couples, young folks, but they're all ages, going especially out of Florida. But some are going down um, the Pacific, down to Baja and stuff. And they're really young couples. And I just got to ask, how? How did they afford their boat? How do they have enough cash to do what they do? And some of them, I'm sure, are kind of doing stuff that you and I wouldn't be willing to do as far as um, how cheap a living you want to do. But as you get older, you're kind of like, I am not running out of water. I'm not going to eat anything I don't want to eat. And uh, I have a standard of living I'm just used to. So it's probably the difference between older folks and younger folks. Um, so anyway, I, I just, I don't know what it is. Now, a lot of them are doing uh, Patreon, and we actually have one of those too, but we've never pushed it. And so we actually are because going to because of some future things coming up, but we're not ready yet. I mean, we are ready, and we'd love to have Patreon uh, supporters as soon as we could because of what we're doing, but that's all I can talk about. But it's still, just like when we're RVing, there's a mission and a plan behind everything. When that gets, when your mission is defined out, then we announce it and then really lay out the platform. And so, but the big thing is, if you get a chance to watch a couple of sailing shows of couples that are live aboards and not some are just living aboard and still at the state. Some are living aboard and actually going through the Bahamas and places like that. Amazing stories. But they're really, um, when some of them do a really good job of showing how they're living, how they're getting their water, how they're doing their power, how they deal with the weather. Um, it's when you find a good channel like that, um, You'll learn a lot, and it, and the reason I bring that up is it pertains to RVing, uh, especially if you're going to be a boondocker. Uh, how to manage water, how to manage food, how to manage weather, when to ditch and hide, and when to when you're in. Especially if they're sailboat people, they're kind of also re, uh, relying on the wind, and so you've got so many factors, and then safety, of course. And uh, it's it's been amazing to watch. And, and so I want to pass that on is if you get a chance as you're cruising and watching the different shows on YouTube and stuff, do yourself a favor and type in live aboard sailing or something like that and watch a couple of these shows. And some of them will be kind of like, eh, and then other ones will be just, oh, my gosh, beautiful scenery, beautiful photography, especially the youngins who do snorkeling and diving. We'll get some great underwater shots that um, you just, you can't even get shots like that in National Geographic. It's just great stuff. 
So I urge you, if you get a chance, to try something different. Just like I asked you to try our outdoor travel radio. I also ask you to go monitor or go watch a few of those sailing magazine. Um, well, they're not magazines, they're shows. And, yeah, they might be some young folks and stuff that, you know, he's like, oh. Um, but there's a lot to learn. And, and uh, just like RVing, us, you might, some people like us are a little older, probably don't do exactly all the things the young ones do. But there's a compromise, and it's a world out there for everybody. So check it out. Go look at it. Cool stuff. So, of course, you know, I always have to have this deep session with everybody. And, and here's another one. So I'll try to define it and then try to talk about it. But like Sherry and I, we just hit 55. And we thought, well, we're seniors. <laughs> I found out, no, we're not. We have another 10 years for you can be a senior. So, and we keep telling you, we still got some spunk left. So we got some things we want to do. Then we got this problem of health insurance. So we're fine now. Sure, he's working. We have health insurance. But if we want to do anything, we have to think about this Obama thing. Well, and then the Obama thing is also limited to s different states, which is fine and stuff. But it's still like a ball and chain. So when do you get to the point of... And, and, and the reason I bring this up is I actually did a show the other day. of a, It's a video of talking about what not to worry about. And one of the things is stop worrying about the future. And you get to kind of thinking about the future. And you got things you want to do. And then you got these things that are deterrents. So the answer really is, is when you get to the future, wherever you land, you will address it. That makes sense. So you know, some of us old folks that <laughs> tend to plan things out, kind of like you get the best layout you can. You kind of like this is the plan. This is what we're going to do, and it should look like this when we're done. And it, you know, it never really does. Really think about it. all the different things we've done. How many times that the plan didn't really turn out the way it is, but when it ended up turning out either better or kind of how you expected it. Or not at all. But when you got to that point, you were able to deal with it. Good, bad, or indifferent. So, I want to turn this around to RVing, or whatever other things you want to do. And Sherry and I have got some other things we'd like to try to do. And, and so, do we take the chance and go astray and... We might even not even have coverage for a while. And do we take that gamble? Because um, even if we got Obamacare and we ended up doing something outside of the state or outside of the country lines, would we be okay? So the answer to that is, is... You will deal with the situation no matter what it is when you're there. Get to that point. So you're like, well, all right. The worst scenario, let's say I go out and about, you know, i am still got weight to lose and all that stuff and not in as good a shape. I'm working on it. What if um, I'm outside of the state? What if we went to Mexico and I have a heart attack? And Obamacare... Even if I'm paying money and stuff like that, probably won't help me. If I'm in another country, some of those people have, some of those countries have programs where actually you could be treated. What do you do? I think you deal with whatever cards are dealt to you at that time. Now, of course, you want the best deal given to you in the first place. So, how many of you out there are at this point of, I'd love to be an RVer, but, or I'd love to own a sailboat, but, I'd like to go travel to another country, I've always wanted to go to Europe or something, but, I've always wanted to go see Alaska, but, huh, you know, how many of us are doing that, and we're, 
and then before you know it, it's like, you know it's going to happen. We won't have our health anymore. And it will be too late. And then you got to live with what if. What if I would have done that? What if? I don't know if I could bear it to go through life and then get to a point where I can't do anything but remember the great memories if I had to bear with a whole bunch of what ifs. What if I did that trip? What if I did go sailing? What if I did go over the border? What if I did go to Alaska? You cannot get that time back ever, 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 ever. If you make that decision not to do something, it will haunt you. It will be something that you have to live with, especially if you could have tried. And <laughs> I don't know the real answer. I mean, you got common sense, common sense, the thing that our mother and father tried to teach us. Common sense, and I think it's <laughs> a little more common sense with us older and older folks sometimes, but because we had stricter parents, I think. But common sense says you do your nine to five, get your insurance, and chug the line. And then there's life, you know. And I'll even take it farther, and I don't usually do that very often, but. I didn't even bring in religion into this. And I'm not going to specify which one. <laughs> but if you got to, I'm just going to say the pearly gates. Let's just say that. Is the main man there going to say, well, how much money did you make? Did you make lots of money? Did you drive a nice car? Did you have the biggest house in the block? And I don't think that's the questions that are going to be asked. He's gonna. It may be more like, how good were you to other people? Were you grateful? Did you enjoy your time down there? Or up there? <laughs> I don't know. And uh, did you get a chance to see all the things I gave you down there to go look at? And, uh, but, you know, or did you do what you could? Or why did you m skip all those opportunities? I got a feeling that it's, it's more like that if there was that kind of dialogue. Um, so I don't know. I just want to bring this stuff up for your thoughts, your comments. I love to hear that stuff. But how are you going to deal with some of the stuff? Now, everybody's scenario is different. But there's got to be that everybody's got their different ball and chain, whether it's health whether it's family, whether it's, uh, you know, divorces, there's all these different things. We understand. But we all deal with these things like, you know, I have an opportunity to do something, or I kind of like to stick my neck out and try this. Or, I'd like to try that. And you keep talking yourself out of it. And then your partner, probably, you know, like my <laughs> Sherry's more down to earth than me, you know, doesn't shut it down, but says, you know, if you do that, this and this and this could happen. And and, and then you're back into that, oh, I better not do it. Then you're going to deal with what if. Now, I don't know how many times I'll tell you that, you know, well, Sherry and I have been married for 36 years. And I've stuck my neck out and we've gone directions and stuff. And there has been many times my wife has says, I'm really glad you made me do that. Because on my own, I wouldn't have never done that without you, Rob. That kind of makes me feel good. Of course, there's things I've had her do and we gone and it went amok and we paid the consequences. Don't hear that comment then, but <laughs> still... I still, the day that I'm gone and she's standing on a podium and if I'm the first one to go, I want her to at least be able to say, you know what? It was a hell of a ride with him. He made my life interesting. And I and make her smile. So, 
<laughs> what are you up against? What are your what ifs? Or what are you trying to avoid that will not be a what if in your life? I know it's kind of deep, isn't it? <laughs> I know. It pertains to what we're talking about RVing, traveling, retirement, or hitting the road before you even retire. Finding that kind of job that maybe you can, you know, the stuff takes money. How are you going to do it? And yes, there's things out there also to consider that, yes, you can get donations. You can do pat Patreon and, and do a very good professional way of, of having folks contribute. You can sell products and, yes, stickers too, things like that to make some of this happen. But then you think, oh my gosh, I've never done something like that. Well, what if? <laughs> what if you did? What if you tried it? The worst thing you do is fail. At least you could fail. At least you'd have the opportunity of saying, I tried it. <laughs> Give it my best shot. Is that better than sitting in your deathbed at 70, you know, 80 years old or 90 or whatever it is nowadays? going, gosh, I wish I would have bought that RV. I wish I would have gone to Europe. Gosh, I never did get to see Alaska. I never did get a chance to buy that boat. I never did go sailing. What do you think, guys? I'd love to hear your feedback on this stuff. How are you going to make your future go? Are you going to just total line? Or are you going to make your future. I think I'll just leave the show at that. So I'm Rob Scribner from RV Talk Radio. Thank you for listening. Please leave your comments. Please try out our new radio station at Outdoor Travel Radio. We love your friendship. We love your feedback. Have a great day and talk to you next Monday, everybody. Bye now. Thank you for watching our videos. Please take the time to subscribe and consider being a Patreon supporter. There is many more adventures and some big surprises coming in the future with your help. Thanks again.